Hello, I'm Vicki Leroy with Create and Adorn. Thank you for selecting this video and joining me today for one of our technique videos. Generally, the videos that we post on our YouTube channel each week have new jewelry designs or um, new ideas or new products uh, that we're sharing uh, each weekend, but I don't tend to share a lot of specific techniques on those videos. Um, for a few reasons, mostly time. It just takes time to properly show how to do a jewelry technique. But also a lot of my longtime customers and members are already familiar with a lot of these techniques because they've, they've done them for so long. That being said, um, I would guess the majority of people actually are not that familiar with them, um, either that they haven't done them um, very often or for maybe quite a while, or maybe it was just something they always uh, struggled with uh, you know particular technique so I wanted to uh, share um, a few specific techniques over a course of a handful of videos because any new every new design or project uh, that I share on this channel pretty much just uses the same uh, handful of techniques over and over again you know so um, whether it's the wire working or um, pearl knotting or stringing like we're doing today it's, it's really some basic techniques and once you have them down then you can do all these other you know designs that we share so even uh, the specific projects that we may have kits for have step-by-step -step tutorials and I'll make video tutorials for them but even those don't have the specifics of how you do that technique just to you know, do it, make a wrap loop, do a cramp, do a whatever. Um, again, because the tutorials for that exact technique take a little bit longer. So I uh, wanted to make just a few videos that focused specifically on those techniques for anyone that needs a refresher or just the, the how to. So I'm going to actually make a couple versions of them. These are meant to be the quicker, quick ones uh, for maybe folks that just need a refresher uh, for how to so I'm making kind of a shorter version for pearl knotting and wire working um, and then stringing like we're doing today and then I'll make a, a kind of longer version that would be um, similar to what we would normally do in our classes but our classes always were like three hours and no one wants to watch a three-hour video <laughs> so uh, try to make them as short as I can that being said, today's video where we're focusing on uh, beading wire, on the finishing of beading wire, I'm going to break it into a part one and part two, um, so it's not so long. And that could also be because not everybody does both parts when they finish them off. Um, so in the first section here, I'm going to show you how to uh, properly crimp and finish off a beading wire, but the part two will have, we'll use a uh, French wire technique and a crimp cover. So those that's purely aesthetics. So for, if you don't want that part, then then you don't have to watch that one. But the wire itself does have to be crimped properly in order to to use it. So I'm gonna I make you a little tabletop thing here so that um, I can see the camera or you can see the technique a little better so even though it cuts me off a bit just a little be able to hopefully see what I'm doing a little bit more so today I'm gonna to be talking about beetle on it's a brand beetle on wire there's also soft flex C flex those are just brand names they're all the same thing they all are uh, what we call beading wire that is nylon coated stainless steel wire well that doesn't show very well does it it's stainless steel wire that's uh, nylon coated and the nylon coating uh, protects it and makes it um, you know slip so you can easily string on it the wires inside have a they have a different quantity of wires which will determine its flexibility so when you're purchasing Beetalon, you may see it in, in spools like this, whether you buy it in a craft store or something like that. And Beetalon, the brand, makes a lot of other things. They make tools and bead mats and lights. But generally, when someone's saying Beetalon, they refer to its key product, which is its beading wire. Now, one thing you'll find is that it always has a number. Here it says 19. This one says 7. 
There's another beetle that says 49. Those three numbers are very important. They determine the wire's flexibility. Here, I made a lovely diagram that I show in all my classes that hopefully will make some sense. So inside the beading wire, there are several smaller wires. So this looks backwards to me looking at it, but hopefully it looks right to you. So in this very professional photo or drawing, the seven strand has seven fatter wires, right? So the diameter say is the same, but the seven strand has seven wires, so they're fatter. The 19 strand has 19 individual wires, so those would be smaller. And the 49 has 49 individual little strands, so those would be smaller yet. The higher the number, the more flexibility the wire has, the better it drapes, um, the better your, your piece will turn out, the better your necklace will drape, and the more expensive the wire is. So it's common for folks to want to grab this seven strand because it's like $3, uh, but it's crappy. I wouldn't use this for anything. So, and it's because if you, it's because there's only seven strands, the wire, that's, those seven strands are, are fat or thick. And so what happens is if you're stringing with it and you get a kink in it, see, it stays kinked forever. So, uh, so people, you know, will grab it for its price, but it's really yucky wire. Just step up and spend the other like $10 and get a really nicer quality. This is the 19 strand. Um, I just, I don't have any 49 strand. They'll all look the same, but I promise you the drape is, is important. So this is a 19 strand. The other um, number though, to pay attention to when you're, when you're buying them is a number that's really teeny tiny here. It's the diameter or thickness of it. And this is, it'll say it in inches, but this is a 015. There's a 012, a 015 and 018. The higher the number, the thicker it gets. They're really so close um, in size anyway. And you would determine the thickness you need based on the size of the hole in the bead. But for the most part, just about any hole will fit on any of these. But you want to fill the hole as much as possible. So you don't, you wouldn't want to just buy the 012, which is the thinnest, and then use it for every bead because if the hole is quite a bit larger, it's bouncing all over the string, right? You want to fill it as much as possible. So this is a 015. I'm going to use it um, for just about everything. It'll fit uh, glass beads, uh, most pearls, most gemstones. The 012 will fit all gemstones and all pearls. So it just depends what you're working with as to what diameter you need. Uh, but the 015 is a good medium diameter, will fit most beads. It's also the most economical. When uh, you go down to the 012, it gets a little uh, more expensive because uh, it's harder to manufacture. The last thing I'm going to point out is, is color. It's a um, typical uh, regular color. It's called bright stainless steel color. For the most part, we don't see the wire. But sometimes you do. If the beads are transparent crystals or gemstones, or we, um, I've made beautiful floats where the, where the wire is visible, I've done it. They make a beautiful um, satin silver color and a beautiful um, gold color. The, the colors are really gorgeous. And they're a little pricier, but if you're going to be stringing and covering the entire thing, meaning none of it's gonna show, then you just need the right color, right? So like here's a, here's a multi-strand um, of one of our precious palettes, right? This is all done in here and the ends are up in the cones. So you don't see any of the wire. There's no need at all to use the colored one, um, right? For something like that, because it's going to be covered. Now, the most important element though is the finishing of it, right? It does not tie in a knot, it needs a crimp, um, what's called a crimp on the end of it. And there's a couple different types of crimps. There's a crimp bead, which is normally like a small round one or two millimeter corrugated little bead made out of stainless steel. Those are very hard to crimp. Um, even whether you're doing a flat or a crimping plier, like I'm going to show the stainless steel, the, the metal itself makes it more difficult to crimp because stainless steel is a hard metal, um, but the shape also makes it really difficult. So that's why um, there's crimp tubes. And a crimp tube 
is easier to crimp. I'm trying to grab one so you can see it. And I'm just going to string it on the wire so you can hopefully see what, but it's just a little tube. So I'm going to figure out, see, there it is. So this, this is a two by two, meaning two millimeters long by two millimeters wide. That's a good size. If you go down to a one by two, meaning two millimeters round and one that it's short, a two by two is a great size. There's almost no need to do any other size. There's no need for longer, in my opinion. Um, you know, unless you're doing super heavy, maybe then you want a two by three. The most important thing about your crimp tube when you purchase them, purchase them, is that it's sterling silver or gold filled. It's very important that they're not stainless steel. And it, again, if you're purchasing them in a craft store like Michael's, um, it has to, in all sterling findings or chain has to say sterling silver on it, right? It has to say the metal. If it does not say sterling silver on the crimp tube or gold filled, then it's not. Then it's plated stainless steel. And you'll have a very hard time crimping it. The beauty of the crimp tube is how um, it manipulates so beautifully around the wire to hold it, which I'm going to show you in just a second, which just won't happen in, in a stainless steel crimp. So that's a very good example of when someone is having trouble crimping and it's the materials. It's not the person. It's just the materials. It's not you. You know, so, so it's, it's using those type of materials that prevents you from having success with it. Okay. So how you use them, we put a crimp tube on here. Let's see if can scoot this even closer or tip down. Crimp tube. Then you go through any the clasp you want to use, whatever clasp that is. You string through a clasp. And I'm just stringing through a lobster claw clasp. Then you're taking the tail and going right back through the crimp tube in the same direction. And I will show you close up. I'm going to scoot the crimp tube all the way to the clasp and leave a little tail here. Let me see if I can get a board. I make sure you can kind of see it from there. Right, but crimp tube all the way to the clasp. There's a little tail. It's this little black almost shows it better. Kind of, there you go. Right, so pretty much as close as you can get it. You don't want it not to have any movement, but as close as you can get it. And the little tail, I've got about an inch tail there. Don't get crazy with it, just gonna cut it off. You could smash this flat with like a chain nose or a needle nose. It, it would probably stay. Um, however, that's what they make crimping pliers for. Right, here's a crimping plier. That's its only job is to crimp. See, it's, a, it's in there. So it has two, two stations on the end. One, the top one, they look like two oval stations, but the top one on one side has a little extra tooth. Oh, I made a diagram. <laughs> See? It looks like two moons. Here's the two stations. One, two. Top one on one side has a little tooth, extra tooth right there. That's the top station, that's the bottom station. I think I don't give my day job and become an artist. So, crimping is a two step process. The crimp tube, oh, look, I had that backwards. It's the bottom station that has the tooth. Sorry. Um, the station that has a little extra tooth, it's the bottom station. Sorry. Crimping is two steps. I'm gonna place it in the bottom station and give it a little squeeze, and then we're gonna turn it. And squeeze it again. So when you place it in the bottom station, that where that little tooth is will crimp or bend in and it'll look like a little burrito or taco or whatever it looks like to you, right? When you squeeze that, that little tooth side will make that little indentation. What's groovy about using that two millimeter crimp tube, the thickness or diameter of the crimping plier the crimping plier is two millimeters wide. The crimp tube is two millimeters long. You place it in the bottom station, and then you look at either side of the crimping plier. It should fit perfectly. You shouldn't see it. 
You want to make sure it's lined up perfectly. I look on both sides. When it's lined up in there perfectly, you've got it. She's good. She's golden. When it's lined up, then you're going to give it a nice gentle squeeze. Gentle, gentle. It's this Australian silver. The metal is very soft, right? So it's going to mold and manipulate around the wire so beautifully. And then I've got a little dent. I can even see it. So you've got a little dent in one side. It should be perfectly centered. Your other side is is just round. Let's see if I can turn her around. There you go. It's just round. I'm trying to turn there. Yeah. Let's see if you can try to see it. I will figure this out. There's a little indentation. Anyway, when you look at her, you should see that little indentation. So now it looks like a C or a taco or a U. You're going to turn the crimp tube so that little dent, that little indentation, is folding up or it's going up to the ceiling. So I'm going to place the crimp tube in the top station of the crimping plier this time. Again, line it up so I don't see any lined up perfectly, but so that little indented part is facing the ceiling. And then I squeeze. And sorry, I'm trying to see it. Okay. Now, here we go. So now it should be folded. So what was like a little burrito is now compact. Right, should squeeze together. And if it moves on you, just rearrange, you know, position it, reposition it. But she's all folded and looks beautiful. The best thing is to give it a pull. Pull that crimp tube and make sure it's not sliding. Right? Even it doesn't it matters more that it's secure than how it looks. If it doesn't look great, that's okay. We're just learning. But give it a tug. It's on there beautifully. The last step is to cut that tail off. You don't you don't want to um work this tail through the beads. That just makes that end of your necklace or bracelet stiff and the tail will always work its way back out and just scratch you. So I promise if you cut it off properly close to the crimp tube using a heavy duty cutter, do not use your fine wire cutter or cord cutter, beat along a stainless steel. So it will put little gouges in a fine cutter, but you'll cut that little tail off and then you'll have your clean crimp tube and she's ready to go and you're ready to string so there's no little tail to string up beads it's it's a perfect little and that's all you need on the other end very clean when you get to the other end you put on your crimp tube go through the other side of your clasp back down do the same thing again pull that tail crimper and, and you're golden and it's good that is part one 18 minutes in Hopefully you'll join me for part two. If you need part two, we're going to do a French wire cover um, and a crimp cover. So in case you're wondering what that is, I've got to finish here. So you're not seeing the little loop of the bidelon or the crimp tube. We've covered the loop of bidelon and the crimp tube with the cover. So it's very, it looks very nice, very professional. So. Hopefully you'll join me for that one or another video here soon. Thank you so much. Sparkle brightly like the star that you are.